Hello everyone, this is a short video on how to properly evaluate your source materials. Good places to find source materials are Google Scholar. All of the materials that are going to be produced by Google Scholar will be peer-reviewed articles and journals, which will in fact be scholarly and will be a good source. Other places to find relatively credible information is .gov and .orgs. Um, so yeah, otherwise, if you can't find your sources in those places, electronically I mean, if you find a physical journal or go to a library and find sources that way, obviously those are going to be good. But for electronic sources that are not .gov, .org, or scholarly articles, we want to put them through this quick little test. The articles have to pass all five points that I'm about to refer to, otherwise you shouldn't use that source. So the first letter of the CRAAP test is C. C stands for currency, meaning how old is this source material that you have found. Typically when we're talking about educational um, topics, we want to steer clear of anything older than 10 years, especially if we're talking about sciences um, and humanities um, and processes. Uh, the only time you would go older than 10 is history topics, because obviously, unless there's a new finding in history from today, looking back, you're going to have to look back into the time of the event that you're talking about in order to find proper source material. So proper source material in a history speech might be journals or diaries from people that lived back then. And obviously those are older than 10 years. But anything else we want to keep 5 to 10 years old. And the next letter is R. R means relevancy. Um, how does this source material relate to your topic? It, this is very important because later in the semester we're going to be talking about logical fallacies and if you choose materials that do not support your topic it becomes a red herring or a way of distracting the audience from what your actual topic is um, so we want to make sure that your source directly connects to your topic the very next letter is the first a the a is this A is for authority, so this is all about the author or the, um, uh, the company or the entity that created this material. So who wrote the material? Are they qualified to be writing about this material? Is it a mechanic talking about physical well-being and massage therapy? Or is it a massage therapist talking about massage therapy, etc.? So the person who wrote it should be credible and reliable in their field that they are talking about. The next letter is another A. This A happens to stand for accuracy. So is this source reliable? Does this source information match up with other source information? If you find two sources that are talking about the same thing, and they do not agree on anything, or there's some discrepancies that seem like big deals to you, you should probably find a third source. And if the third source agrees with the first source, then the second source is probably wrong, um, or vice versa. Um, if you find sources that aren't really agreeing, you should really just find a different source. And the last letter is P. So P stands for purpose. Why was this source material created? Was it created to inform you on a topic? Was it created to persuade you on a topic? Or was it written to just entertain you? Again, those are the only three purposes any media exists. So if you are giving an informative topic, an informative speech, you should steer away from sources that strive to entertain you, such as TMZ and MTV, um, or to persuade you. Um, I know that there's a lot of things going on in the media today trying to persuade you, 
but you got to find things that are trying to inform you and only inform you. All right. So that is how to properly assess whether or not a source is credible. Um, if you have any questions about my little test, please shoot me an email and I will clear them up for you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.